Welcome back. Let's complete this deep dive into the internals of Node by going all the way into the LibUV source code. We're about to venture somewhere that very few Node developers ever go. So we're going to have that extra advantage when it comes to knowing exactly what Node is doing. So let's get into it. In our browser, we can go to libuv.org, the official site of our favorite library over here. While libuv is part of Node, it's also meaningful on its own. Remember, Node allows us to use libuv by connecting to it with the Node.js bindings, which allow the functionality in libuv to be used by our JavaScript. But other programming languages have bindings to libuv as well. We can see this if we go to this documentation tab and follow this others link here. We can see scrolling down all the way to the bottom here under bindings that libuv has bindings to Ruby, Lua, C++, and Python, and all of these other common and less common programming languages. These are all client languages that can use the libuv library, just like Node. This is why it has its own website, which you can see is made with love by the libuv team. Node is libuv with a very well-known client language. That's JavaScript. But as we just saw, libuv has bindings to other languages as well. So the libuv code lives in a slightly different place, in a different repository. And let's just get into it. Show me the libuv code. We're taken to GitHub under the libuv organization. And again, we have a few folders that we can explore containing our documentation and tests. But the bulk of the C code that makes up libuv is in this source folder. Now remember, we're exploring what happens from the JavaScript to our final result when we run fs.open to open a file. We've seen the call through the Node.js APIs in our fs.js file and going through the Node.js bindings. Now let's find it in libuv. Now in our source folder, we can see that there are two main folders. One for Unix, which is a family of operating systems that includes both Linux and macOS, where things tend to work in similar ways. This is because both Linux and macOS are descendants of this original Unix operating system. Windows is also a family or a group of operating systems where things tend to work similarly. There are incremental updates with each version, but many of the fundamentals remain the same. So it makes sense to group these together. Let's start by looking at the implementation of fs.open on Unix. Scrolling down in the folder, we can see references to Unix systems like Android, which is Linux-based, and Darwin, which refers to macOS. Darwin is the code name for the core components of the Apple operating systems. So we're on the right track, but the open functionality is going to be in this fs.c file. 
Notice that unlike the node API bindings, libuv is using C rather than C++ with its .cc file extension. Going into our file, we see that we have another few thousand lines of code. And we scroll down, we can see that this is C code, which might not really mean anything to us. But remember, the API bindings, we're calling this function inside of libuv. And we can do a search for that function, which if you remember was called uv underscore because it's in libuv and then fs underscore open. This function is being called in a few places, but let's look for the definition. So our result over here is this C function definition. But this doesn't seem to be doing any opening of files. It's just really calling this init and passing in open. This is a way of calling functions that libuv uses. But the good news is that we don't have to search far for the actual implementation. The actual implementation is in this function called uv underscore underscore fs underscore open. All right, here we go. This is where the hard work of actually opening the file and calling down into the operating system and doing file system operations is done. When we call this open function here, this is the actual open function for Unix operating systems. That makes a system call down into your operating system to do whatever it needs and then give you a handle on that file, a way of working with that file and reading and writing to it. That's the R that we get back from this function call. And it's transformed and returned all the way back up into our JavaScript. Wait a second. Let's go to our Windows version now. So we want to go back out of our Unix folder and into our Win folder where we're going to have another fs.c file. Notice there's fewer files here for other variants of Windows because Windows operating systems are all relatively similar. There's not as much variation as between Android mobile phones and Mac OS on Apple computers and these open source distributions of Linux that there's hundreds of. So Windows is simpler in some way, but let's see what this fs.c file has in store for us. Now remember, we're still looking for uv underscore fs underscore open. That's what's being called from our Node.js API bindings. And again, we have this init pattern where the actual function that opens the file lives close by. And we can find it by doing a search for other functions that look like open. So we just saw one. And then the second one is this fs underscore underscore open function. This is where the good stuff happens on Windows. And we see these D words, which are structures that Windows uses. Scrolling down, we can see that this function is actually a fair bit longer than the Unix one. It's actually well over a hundred lines of code, maybe two or three hundred. And we only get to the actual call that opens the file on Windows all the way down here. This create file w function gives us that file handle that we just talked about on Windows. And there's more after that. This 
open underscore OSF handle function over here transfers ownership of the file handle that we got from create file w to this fd variable here, or our file descriptor, which is what we then use in C to work directly on the file. And finally, at the bottom of this super long function, we set a result with that file descriptor and return it back up through our code. So why is this function so much longer than the Unix version? Well, for one, things are just a little bit more involved in Windows land. But there's also a bit of code here near the beginning of our function that allows the results of opening a file to be compatible between Windows and Unix so that we can work with files in the same way, regardless of which operating system we're on. This is one of the benefits that working with libuv gives us as Node developers. Okay, so maybe you've been following along so far, but now you're wondering, will I need to know C and C++ for this course to be a Node developer? The answer to that is, a resounding no. The whole reason why we have high-level languages like JavaScript and runtimes like Node is so we don't have to write code in these low-level languages and worry about all of these complications that you've had a taste for here. But as we learn more about what Node does, having this knowledge will allow us to be not quite as intimidated by the internals. We've now explored this code as far as we can. Any deeper and we'd have to start looking at the C libraries and the operating system code for Windows and Linux, for example. Now we can point out how things are implemented in the underlying node source code. This is where our fs.open function call journey ends. We did it. Going this deep is not something that many people can do. So consider yourself ahead of the game. Let's take a well-deserved break and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.